Tech family, I recently sought to upgrade my own laptop, my MacBook Pro 14 with M1, to one of the new ones with M2. As a laptop reviewer, I do own several laptops which I enjoy using. However, the MacBook Pro 14 has without a doubt been my most used laptop since it came out. It has come with me all around the world, from India to Colombia to Australia. Anyway, I was shocked at how stressful buying a new laptop is. I was personally paralyzed by indecision as to which one to get. There are just so many choices when it comes to what you can configure it with, and of course, these laptops aren't upgradable, so you have to choose very carefully when you buy it. Am I paying too much for upgrades that I just don't need? Or paying too little and will later regret not having an upgrade that I do need? This got me thinking. It's time, I once again did my annual video on why buying a laptop sucks, and why, for many people, it's just such a stressful process. Look, for many of my viewers, buying a laptop is a pretty major purchase. You wanna make sure you're getting the right thing. So here's what I think is going wrong right now in the laptop industry. And let me know in the comments below what you think, if you think I've nailed it or I've missed something. And by the way, if you're wondering why I'm in this completely different studio, this is the new studio that I'm building out. And honestly, guys, it's a bit of a disaster right now. I'm even filming off my travel camera. Anyway, let's get into it. I believe most laptops today are designed to be sold rather than to be used. Let me give you an example. Manufacturers put in processors that are just too powerful for many of the laptops that they are in. Modern processors all run at variable speeds, depending on how much power the manufacturer feeds to them. The more power fed to a processor, the faster it runs, but the hotter it gets, and the more cooling is needed to keep the laptop at a comfortable temperature. This can result in fan noise, and if even that can't cool it down, the performance of the laptop will be dropped so that it draws less power. Most processors that I've tested are overpowered for the laptop's cooling solution. And honestly, for many people who are just buying a laptop for casual use, like browsing the web, they don't need that kind of performance to begin with. One reason I believe manufacturers do this is because it sells better. You, the customer, think you're getting something superior. For example, when you buy a laptop with the latest generation Intel 13th Gen i7 processor, you can distinguish it as better than the 12th Gen i5 processor. Even though for many of my viewers, they will notice zero difference in what they do on the laptop, that is. Most processors right now, generation to generation, there really isn't that much of a difference in performance, with the exception of when Apple moved their laptops from Intel to their own M-series processors. That was definitely worth upgrading to, as for many people, the M-series processors are far better than Intel's ones. Those laptops run significantly cooler and quieter, with much longer battery life. Anyway, there are many other examples of this, where manufacturers are trying to achieve something with their laptops that sounds snazzy, but makes them more expensive and often inferior for you, the end buyer. The thinnest laptop is another one I frequently hear. Sure, a thin laptop sounds great, as people think it's more portable, but the downside is that thinner laptops are harder to keep the components inside cool. This can result in a substantially warmer feeling laptop, one with louder fan noise and that is more expensive than it needs to be. What laptop manufacturers really should be doing is focusing on the things that matter most to the end user. Most users spend the majority of their time looking at the screen, typing on the keyboard, and using the trackpad. While doing that, they don't want to feel warmth from the chassis or hear disturbing fan noise. Add to it some good speakers, a decent webcam for zoom, and long battery life, and you get the basics right. That's what people want. When it comes to performance tasks, I'd personally rather wait a couple of extra seconds than compromise that experience. Same goes for having a slightly thicker laptop. Next, most laptops aren't designed with just you in mind, the buyer. They are also designed for the retailer. Most laptop manufacturers see themselves as having two buyers. There is you, the end buyer, but there's also the retailer who sells you the laptop, Amazon, Best Buy, etc. These retailers have a lot of say into how the laptop manufacturers configure and design their laptops. Let's say a large retailer tells the laptop manufacturer they want something to sell to a customer looking to spend 800 US dollars. For the retailer, they may want a laptop with the latest powerful processor because as I said, customers can easily distinguish it as a desirable laptop. On the flip side, 
that same retailer might not care as much about a bright screen, no disturbing fan noise or high quality speakers. That's because their stores aren't that well lit, so a dim screen looks bright enough when on display. Stores are loud, so you won't hear fan noise, and who tests laptop speakers before buying? You can see the issue. Next, many laptops are designed to maximize profit rather than customer satisfaction. Let's start with my most hated example of this. Manufacturers pre-installing their laptops with bloatware that aggressively prompts you to upgrade and buy a subscription. The worst of these is the supposed protection bloatware like Norton and McAfee. Now, I ask you, which is worse? There is a real tech support scam going around right now where scammers create advertisements that inform you that your computer is infected with a virus, when of course it isn't. They are tricking you when you click on the fake warning message. It routes you to the scammers. They then try to get you to pay to fix the non-existent virus. How different is that to what Norton and McAfee are doing, where they constantly try to scare you into buying a subscription with them? What are they protecting you against? A virus? Windows already comes with antivirus. Look, to be fair, there are features with these protection suites that some people will see benefit from. But one, they shouldn't be marketing to you so aggressively on a device you've just paid a lot of money for. And two, I would hazard a guess, many people are tricked into buying one of these subscriptions that they just don't need. If you are diligent with what you click on when on the web, and who you answer calls to, you probably don't need it. Heck, on a recent MSI laptop that I tested, I wasn't even able to uninstall Norton 360 because they conveniently had the button to go next in the uninstall process off the screen. And there was no way to disable their pop-up sales notifications, which kept interrupting my day. This degrades the experience you have with your new laptop. The reason I believe manufacturers do this is because they are getting a financial kickback from these software vendors. Oh, and another example of manufacturers doing things to maximize profit rather than satisfaction on the example I mentioned earlier of putting in a processor you likely don't need, Apple charges $500 more for their stock MacBook Pro 14s with one terabyte of storage. As part of the justification for that price hike is the faster processor. I recently showed in my review of Apple's M2 MacBook Pros that for the majority of people, including myself, they will see no performance benefit of this upgrade. In fact, for many people, it actually makes the laptop worse. I'll place a link in the description below so you can go watch that one. Anyway, how many people buy that configuration because it's the only one available in a physical Apple store, if you want one terabytes of storage that is, or choose to upgrade to it not knowing that for them it makes no difference? Next, many purchase decisions you make are final. As I said earlier, one of the biggest stresses is buying a laptop that can't be upgraded later on. It can be paralyzing trying to work out which configuration you should get with the laptop. And in many areas of the world, you can't return the laptop if you don't like it. Finally, laptop and its component manufacturers are using marketing specifically designed to mislead you. This has gotten so much worse over the last couple of years. You've got AMD's new Ryzen 7000 series for laptops, which contains a bunch of processors that are not actually from their current generation. You've got Intel, who tried to hide the fact they are still on an old 10 nanometer manufacturing process by marketing their latest processors as Intel 7. And don't get me started on Nvidia, who allow massive variances to how their dedicated graphics can be powered, causing situations where a supposed slower and cheaper graphics card like an RTX 4060 may outperform a low wattage and more expensive 4070. But the worst though, is the manufacturers themselves. Check this one claim out from Chewy, uncompromised mobile performance from their Gemi book. Guys, I bought this laptop. It has an extremely slow Intel Celeron processor. Believe me, your performance will be extremely compromised. There are so many examples of this. Manufacturers putting top tier audio names like Bung & Olufsen on their speakers, even though there is precisely zero chance the laptop speakers sound anything like a Bung & Olufsen sound system. And how many times have we seen claims of long battery life only to find the laptop barely lasts four hours. 
Anyway, I promised myself that I'm gonna do shorter, more frequent videos this year. So I'm gonna wrap as I could easily spend the next hour going through many other examples. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with me or if you think there are material things I've missed. And look guys, all is not lost. For the most part, Apple has done a pretty good job in recent years of being focused on the consumer and delivering a good long-term product. They've listened and got rid of the awful touch bar, the hot running Intel processors, and added back the ports. They've focused on the things you are most likely to want in a good laptop, like a good keyboard, trackpad, and display. They've solved the crappy laptop speakers and webcams that have plagued laptops for an eternity. And if other manufacturers are watching this and wondering why Apple makes so much money, Perhaps they should be more focused on listening to what clients really want and producing the best possible laptop for you, rather than being distracted by all the things I just mentioned in this video. And guys, Apple aren't the only ones. I'd advise you to look broadly at some of the other brands you may not have considered before. Small companies like XMG, Electronics, Framework are all super focused on delivering the best possible experience for you, the end buyer, without compromise. Heck, even the recent MSI laptop I tested, other than not being able to uninstall Norton 360, was a pretty good device. Well, that's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to click the like button and get subscribed. Not only does it show your appreciation for the insane amount of effort that went into making this, but as I always say, it makes my mother very proud. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.